Welcome to my thoughts on X-Men, the 1992 animated series, Season 2 episodes 5 and 6, Repo Man, and Externally Yours. Now, there will be spoilers for the these two episodes and the ones leading up to it. And uh, please support the SAC After Strike. It's extremely important, and they deserve as much as, you know, Anything you can spare, uh, there's a donation link in the description box and some links to videos that explain why the strike is so important. So, let us dive right into Episode 5, Repo Man. So, yeah, really cool to see Alpha Flight. I, I knew that they would eventually show up. They're a very significant part of Wolverine's past in the comics. And we even get Weapon X flashbacks. And they're, of course, you know, they, they make them appropriate for children. So here, the adamantium absorbs into his body. Sure, that's, that's how it always was. And when he goes on a rampage after and, like, takes his claws against guards... Yeah, androids. That's how it is. There, it's he's definitely not stabbing and slashing human beings, but they do actually do a little body horror when he comes to and the the claws come out and it, you know they push it as far as they can with a you know children's show basically. But yeah, um, let's see and. Uh, Right, uh, really, really cool when Jean Grey is, you know, scanning. She's trying to contact Xavier through Cerebro, and we see... I don't remember all of them, but we definitely do see the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, and, ah, uh, yeah, there was at least one other, you know, very cool bit of just, you know, it's... Not necessary, but those of us who know and love the comics, you know, we, we get a real kick out of seeing, you know, yeah. Let's see. And I mean, it may have, it may have been, like, um, AV testing kind of thing of seeing, well, how excited are the kids by the, the prospect of seeing these particular mutants, and, you know, maybe they can work them in, because, you know, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, pretty significant to the X-Men in the comics. And, yeah, very, very cool to get a an entire Wolverine-centric episode. And, yeah, they do a, they do a very good job. Uh, you know, it's, it's very abbreviated, you know, in the comic. Like, there's an... There's at least one entire comic book just entirely dedicated to Wolverine, you know, receiving the adamantium, you know, if I had to guess, it would probably, it would probably basically have to be a two-parter for them to fit uh, all of it in, but yeah, they, they do quite a good job, they even, you know, he has the, the headgear thing that he does in the, in the comics, and they did eventually fit in, in the live-action movies, and yeah, just a really, really good job fitting in and, and making sure there was still enough action for, you know, to fit the, you know, there's an expectation of, of that much action from this show in particular and just Saturday morning cartoon action shows in general. And, yeah, you know, having him fight the, the you know, the Alpha Flight members that try to get him back and you know, fight his way back out at the end is, yeah. And that brings us to the second that I'm talking about today, episode, season two, episode six, externally yours. So this is the Gambit episode. I really appreciate it. I forget if they keep doing this. Certainly there are a number of more, you know, yeah, there. You know, yeah, we already know Jubilees. Now we've gotten Gambit and Wolverine's backstory and some follow-up. Yeah, I, I forget if they also do, because certainly there's stuff to explore with Beast, Gene, Cyclops, and Xavier. Um, 
but yeah, it's you know, yeah, we are also already got the one for Magneto. And yeah, very cool. You know, the danger room always useful for fitting in some action if the story doesn't otherwise completely support it and seeing it brought to like max level and the you know the giant squid and and you know they bring back a bunch of enemies that were defeated on the show but you know the danger room can always bring back you know so there's more Mr. Sin Mr. Sinister Omega Red Apocalypse who even grows to gigantic size as he is wont to do when called for you know, they did sort of work that in in the live-action movies, but, you know, it wasn't quite in the real world. It was basically the astral... Was it the astral plane? It was definitely a... It was a telepathic battle. That was... It just felt... I, I get it. I get that the live-action movies have always run far away from the the really, you know, the kind of ridiculous comic book stuff, but... Just, yeah, really cool to see, you know, proper, gigantic the apocalypse. And, let's see. Yeah, and we, you know, so the episode is about the the tithe that the they have to bring to the external. And, yeah, so, you know, so there's this 300-year feud and they you know there was this idea maybe they could end it if you know if the yeah if a person from one of the if if an assassin married a thief and you know yeah ultimately it didn't you know and that is something there's there's a lot of cases throughout history where two factions that were at war you know sometimes it's countries with princes and princesses marrying you know and yeah it's it's you know it's a huge part of human history so really good to to you know bring it up in a way that the kids can you know if you tell the kids okay so you know several hundred years ago you know France and England you know it's going to be a lot more <laughs> yeah it's it's much much more difficult to to relate to but you know by this episode they know and care about gambit so that's and we do unfortunately do the thing with you know no fury like a whim, like a woman scorned and this thing of like a a woman basically like luring in and and kidnapping a man to marry him you know is yeah it's a very unfortunate trope it, there is a lot of it in you know, fiction. There's this, it's this idea that the only thing women care about is getting married, and so just, yeah. And I, I do really appreciate that, you know, when, um, you know, and yeah, and we even have two women fighting over Gambit, and Rogue is actually like hurt that. You know, at the idea that Gambit loves, I, f I forget her name, but this other woman, you know. But when, you know, G yeah, Jean shows the, the truth to the external, who thankfully is reasonable. And the, you know, yeah, Gambit is told, you know, you, you, if you want, we can, you know, the, yeah, if you want, I, the external, will take out you know and he says just take her powers away we don't want anyone dead you know appreciate that and yeah so the the very end of the episode briefly introduces us to barbarous and we get yeah the the yeah and another glimpse at what's going on in the savage land and i think that might be about what I have, I guess they, maybe they felt that Cyclops would have been unnecessary. I mean, certainly there are a lot of characters once you get to, you know, by the end of this episode, you know, the assassins fighting the thieves, and then you have several X-Men, and yeah, like there wouldn't really have been anything for Cyclops to do there. 
So, you know, that's why they had him be so wounded at the very start. And, you know, he's there are other episodes where Cyclops is very prominent. I suppose that pretty well covers... I like that, you know, the, the assassins, one of them has, like, predator wrist blades. That's very, very cool. And... Yeah, that is that is everything. So, but yeah, yeah, you can understand why Gambit did not want to share this part of his background with the X Men. You know, it, it's yeah, you know, he sh he shouldn't feel shame for it, but it is the kind of thing. You know, I mean, essentially, it was a gang war. He was he was part of a gang, and. That's not something that you, you know, hopefully this episode helped, and, you know, inspiring kids the idea that you can move on from that sort of thing. You know, by the end, Gambit says, I'm not one of you anymore. I'm an X-Man. You know, I've moved on with my life. I don't want to, to have anything to do with this part of my life anymore. You know, and that is extremely important. Uh, like... Everybody makes mistakes. Not all, not all of us make like equally big mistakes, but it's not, it's not very useful to judge everyone based on their mistakes. We need to focus on what can you do to make it up. To, you know, how can you make this right? And yeah, you know, Gambit when he hears, you know. You gotta come back for one last score. You know, he doesn't even really hesitate. Like, he pretty much immediately decides, you know, okay, at the very start, he's like, I don't want anything to do with this. But then he hears, well, your brother has been captured. You know, this is the only way. And, yeah, he, he comes back and makes things right. And, yeah, that is, that is everything. So, yeah, uh, catch you again tomorrow. Make my Marvel.